Alright, how's it going? Today we're doing the Shattered Throne soloed floors on Warlock this time. We're using Sun Braces on Dawnblade again because they have proven themselves to be extremely good uh, in recent times. We're using Icarus Stash over uh, Heat Rises this time because Icarus Stash is very useful. And also, if you have the ability to kill a lot of enemies with your solo grenades, uh, it's not particularly necessary to use Heat Rises. Anyway, we're also using a bow and a fusion rifle and the sleeper simulant. The sleeper simulant is actually really good for this um, because it, you can use it to one shot, sorry, one phase both uh, bosses. Um, I've got taken spec on my bow that does come in handy. It's a ten percent bonus instead of a seven point seven percent. Uh, uh, like uh, minor spec or major spec, it does actually affect um, high ability to one shot certain enemies. So if you do have taken spec, uh, use that. Um, you might be able to do it better if you have a precision frame kinetic bow, because that also does do extra damage. Uh, and I put a minor spec on it. So to start off, we're doing the, um, yeah, we're finding the uh, Labyrinth Architects. We're going to start off by using the Sun Braces to get our grenades and then just spam them on the boss. As you can see, that absolutely melts them. To pass on with these things, uh, you have to kill all the Acolytes and the boss and then the next symbol will show. You don't have to kill anything else. However, uh, I started with very little ammo, so I'm gonna try to kill things in an attempt to get it. Spoilers, I don't. <clears throat> anyway, so we're just killing some stuff here. I saw we had the Infinity Snake, which means Temple of the Infinite, which is just over here. Since I'm going over this little bridge thing here, some hobgoblins are gonna spawn. If you just uh, run, and keep running, they won't be a nuisance at all. So something I found with Sunbraces as well is if you look at the enemy's feet while you uh, snap, then um, it's much more likely that you'll kill someone and you might even be able to ignite them that way so you could kill sort of beefier enemies, even uh, mages. So I do that just uh, out of habit. So now we got Tower of the Deep. This is the most annoying because the captain likes to teleport everyone. However, luckily for me he goes onto one of the balconies. Um, I think the solar grenades uh, sort of mess up his pathfinding because he wants to get out of them so much that he'll sort of hide over there so I can just corner him in these grenades and take him out. I stopped to think about using the fusion rifle, but he's not worth it because he's already dead. So now we're moving on to the next bit, the Temple of the Sky. I forget to say hi to Tol Toland. Always say hi to Toland, he's a nice guy. Anyway, I'm just going to clear some stuff out with Sunbraces. You literally do not have to shoot your gun if you do it well. And now on to the Labyrinth Architects. You can just spam this. Use a couple of fusion rifle shots just to get it done quicker. And uh, move on to the next bit. We've got uh, Enfish, which is right next to us. Garden of the Prophet. Gonna avoid the bridge there because Pharynxes will spawn if I go on it. They might have spawned just by being near it, but yeah, it's fine. For whatever reason, I use the snapper, no idea why. So now I'm a bit lost with my pants down. Um, so I'm just waiting on a grenade. 
He's almost dead anyway, so it's fine. Now we got 69 fish. That's on the other side. Shattered cliffs, I think it's called. Anyway, that's the phalanx. He's not too difficult if you uh, just sort of stand in the sort of entrance corridor. It's not a corridor, you know what I mean? Oh, we're going to wait for the captain to spawn. We're going to take him out with the fusion. And we're going to do a snap. And then just spam fusion. Solar nodes. I'm so used to using fusion nodes all the time. But stuff I was getting nerfed, so you might as well learn to do something else. Now we're on to the cloud snake. I forget which one that's called. I can remember all of them except that. That's yes, whatever. Anyway, we're just going to avoid this captain here because he's not going to push up if we go past him. Binary Shrine, that was it. So we see the Minotaur there. Luckily he's not invisible. Just going to get a melee kill and spam grenades as per usual. If you're not getting kills with your solar grenades, I said fusion again, you know, solar grenades, then you're going to want to use your Phoenix Dive to uh, regen your health. And you really shouldn't forget about that. Sometimes I think I'm immortal because I'm spamming solar grenades. But then I realize if I'm not killing anything, I'm not getting my health back. So now we're on to the final one. I'm going to do the same thing. This time with the captain with swords, so if we stand in the grenades, he's gonna try to come at us and he'll die. Anyway, so that's that done. Now we're on to the next bit. This next bit is probably the hardest if you don't do it right. And I'm zero, so it is probably the hardest. This dungeon is really not difficult. So we're going to ignore the mile tool. Going to get a kill, melee kill there, so we can spam grenades and move up while we do so. Going to shoot an arrow there. That will overload the firing so we can't do plus. I'm going to snap this vandal and then use it to kill things. We're going to place a well down here just to get rid of the captain easily. And that's that done. You can move up now, as I do, but then I realize I'm getting flinched way too much, so I go back to kill everything. We've got Sleeper out here because Sleeper can one shot the knights in the head, which is very nice. And with taking spec, my bow can one-shot both the phalanxes and the whole goblins, as long as they're miners. Once again, if you have a Biting Winds or a Crude Redemption, they probably don't need taking spec. As long as you have Explosive Head, Explosive Head does give a flat 11% damage increase. So invest in one of those. So we're just going to kill everything in sight. We're going to do it very quickly. It's not too much of a hassle. If you do get a body shot on with a sleeper on one of the knights, uh, the bow can clean up in one headshot. Knight just gets deleted there, very nice. I'm gonna one shot this phalanx as well. The major health goblins at the back. There are two shots to the head. Um, and barely a two shot to the head, but it is. So yeah, bows are actually really good for this bit. Who would have thought? As you can see, I missed the head shot there, so it's a three shot. 
Anyway, on to the hardest part of the hardest part, which is the beams. Ogre beam section, which is wonderful. Ogres spawn, they can push you off with their um, eye blasts. And that can ruin your run, especially if you're on a warlock, because you can't recover, you can't go upwards. So we're going to check to the left to see which of the two will spawn the ogre. You can tell which one won't, because there'll be a slight distortion. Um, you can use a solar grenade to take out that one, and then can use a fusion rifle to take out this one. This one's the one that matters more, but whatever. Because we we're on the left side, um, we're going to have to deal with an ogre to our right. Which can be a bit annoying, but this is also the reason I use Icarus Dash here. So you can actually get a bit of recovery. This final logo we can just ignore, because we'll be at the end before he can do anything. <clears throat> now on to the throwaway. Oh, you, I bet you can know, I bet you can guess how I'm going to do this. I am, you don't actually have to kill anything. Um, of course your mobility stat does actually matter here. I have to four, but... You know, it doesn't matter at all. Um, so yeah, I'm just killing things. Uh, I've got my fusion rifle out in an attempt to spawn more heavy ammo. Somehow that snap didn't get a kill, so now I just have to wait for my melee to recharge. Which is good enough. I don't know why Bungie doesn't add rally flags to this, because it would make it would make um, these sort of interim sections much quicker for me because I will need full ammo to kill Vorgeth and also full ammo to kill Dulin Karu. Now we're going towards the end, we're going to Phoenix Dive. Why we do this is because if you don't update your health bar after you f exit the uh, throwaway, it, uh, it won't regenerate. Um, and when I say update your health bar, like if you take damage or heal yourself, you know, you won't regenerate health, which is really dumb. But uh, yeah, we just live with it. So now we're just going to jump through these uh, taken boobers. There's a very low chance that you'll actually be hit by one if you're just sprinting past them. But now we're going to go up through the left to avoid all these phalanxes. If you run fast enough they won't be able to blast you and even if they do that won't have done much. So now we're coming up to Vorgeth. You want to be careful before you jump down because if the darkness zone doesn't appear you're a bit screwed. Um, yeah, just off lock, you have to redo it. Anyway, so we're going to go to the left, we're going to hide behind this thing, and we're going to wait for the wizard. Another reason to use a bow is because overloading wizards or taken wizards completely disables them. They're, they're just unable to attack, as you can see right here. Um, uh, they will still attack if the wizard is in the middle of doing an attack. She'll finish that before stopping and being completely disabled. So now we're just going to go around this way. We can use solar grenades, not only for our health, but for ammo conservation. Fortunately, I do get max ammo here in the sleeper. Max is 13, and there we go. Losing a bit of health here, but that's fine. If you use your cover, you can regenerate. Phoenix dive there because I was in a bit of a pickle. If you get stuck in the ogre's beam, um, then uh, phoenix diving is very useful as well. So now we're going up in the fourth one. And it's dead. Now we're going to go into damage phase. Damage phase is very simple. 
shoot Sleeper at the head and win. Especially with Well of Radiance, meaning that we won't have to care about the um, Axion Darts at all. As you can see, Sleeper Simulant just tearing through this guy. And that's that done. Now, all we're going to do is basically just run straight to the boss. And I mean that literally. You don't have to kill on it anything. So we're not going to. We are going to actually have to kill some taken some shadow thrall in the throwaway just because there's no rally banners. So we're gonna book it straight to the lift. If you haven't made a noise, then the wizards won't have noticed you until it's too late. Now, onto this section. We're just going to go towards the left, be as quiet as possible, and then jump. At that point, everything will start noticing you. So you might as well just run to the lift. There used to be phalanxes there back in, uh, before I think Beyond Light. I really don't know what happened to them. Anyway, so now we've got a couple of captains to jump over. Wait a second. See Captains. Try to avoid the blast as much as possible, but they won't kill you if you have 100 resilience in the correct resist mods. And once you pass them, just go to the right, avoid all the vandals. Very simple, very easy. And that's the next lift. Now we have some more captains. Gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kill this one here. The reason we do that is because I'm going to be farming the throwaway and this one is able to pathfind into the throwaway, so we're just killing him there. Um, yeah, so now I'm just going to farm for ammo and super. Uh, this will take a while. Yeah, Jesus Christ, it takes about three minutes. Uh, skip to 2106 to avoid this part. I really... Why, is, why are there no rally banners in this, honestly? I was watching um, that video of the guy who did Solo Flawless Rune really Nightmares. He said that there's a sort of internal cooldown for heavy ammo drops of about 15 or so minutes. Um, so there's literally no point in me doing this because I'm just not going to get any drops until a couple of minutes. In fact, this whole section takes about three minutes, which is. Ugh. Jesus Christ. It's really annoying as well because I do Ankara fight lasts like below a minute. And we just have to wait here for this whole thing. <sighs> so how's every how's everyone doing? You're good. Hope your day's been going well. Speaking of going well, if you think this is going well, if you like what you see, if you find this helpful, if you find this enjoyable, like and subscribe because that'd be pretty cool. I'm gonna do a Titan video after this as well. Someday I might do Spire of the Watcher on the other classes, but um, the thing about Spire is uh, Wyverns, including the final boss, take 
a, a reduced amount of damage from weapons. And the thing is, if you're in the Well of Radiance, if you're in your Well of Radiance as a Warlock, uh, it counts as ability damage. So you bypass that, meaning Well does about 100% increase instead of 20 or something. It's absolutely insane. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I can be bothered to do it. Just use Warlock if you want to do Spire. Anyway, so we're actually getting heavy armor drops. Yay. Just need one more. Once you get one, the others will uh, come quickly as well. And there, we're done. Okay, nice. So now we're just gonna kill these phalanxes. Since you can one shot with them with the bow, you might as well. It's not too much of a time loss, and it's just for safety. So now we're going on to the uh, the wall of boops, the second one. I'm gonna take out the hobgoblins. For these, we're gonna push up. I almost ruined the run here, but thanks to Icarus Dash, I'm able to make it out. Then we're gonna kill this whole goblin, move up to the penultimate lift. Don't know why it couldn't have been one lift, but actually, no, yeah. Um, structurally, yeah, it makes sense. You need a second one. Anyway, doing Kairi fight, let's go. So, I'm gonna start off hitting one guy in the ass. I'll we'll start the thing, throw a nade, get some preliminary damage. Then we're gonna snap a scion and then just spam fusion nades. Solar nades, Jesus Christ, alright. We're gonna run away so some scions are still alive, but I don't actually think it matters too much. We've already killed one knight and the other two are pretty low. Low enough to have one or two fusion shots in to die. Then we're going to go behind the table and put our well down. This will mitigate all flinch from Dilankara because she can't hit us. And then we're just going to hit her in the face with Sleeper Simulant. I'm pretty sure she has a um, increased crit ratio. Not absolutely sure on that, but yeah, Sleeper Simulant does wonders. Anyway, that's it, we're done. Told you it was less than a minute. Um, yeah. If you like what you see, you found it enjoyable, found it helpful, like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated, and it would make my day. Thanks all for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.